Hey guys, welcome to Six Tips. In this video, today we're gonna to show you two things. How fire contractors using UT or ultrasonic testing are non-compliant and doing more harm to you. And secondly, how a sonic inspection is vastly different in ultrasonic testing than what we're about to show you. Let's dive in. All right, guys, welcome. I have Chad here. Hi, guys. Six sips, drinking some coffee. Cheers. Um, so what we're gonna be diving into here, um, this is a Pulse Echo. Um, it's been making its way around the, I guess, the fire industry for the past couple years now. There's been a lot of questions coming out about this, and we wanted to provide some education for you guys on what type of ultrasound this is. I have had Chad um, design for me, and this is Chad, by the way. You guys probably see him in a few videos. Um, he's been a our, while. It's been a little bit. Um, he's our operations manager. Um, but I had him design a blind test for me using this. Do you want to dive into that? Yeah, we're going to show just the. Uh how the PE gauge, pulse echo gauge works. We have three different sets of uh, pipes right here. They're all the same schedule and same diameter. So Sid has no idea what the internal condition is and we're going to show the data that we receive from the pulse echo gauge and then we're gonna compare it against a sonic inspection. Yeah, so I'm not gonna to touch any of these pipes um, because he knows exactly what's in there. I have no idea what's going on in there and I want this to be, I wanna show you guys what this is capable of doing. I have a two and a half inch pipe here. The nominal thickness is supposed to be a 120, is that correct, Jim? Yes, nominal uh, thickness, 120. Manufacturers usually make them about 10% less than that. So we have a 110, 109, 108. You saw that 0.08 kind of show up. So what we're seeing here is pretty much an average uh, yeah. 107 to 110. Um, and we're also looking at an A scan there. So if there was any degradation to that wall, we would know we would going see on a here. difference but we're all right seeing so great energy. pretty much i mean uh, this is repetitive there and so i want to have chad if you want to um have you jump up and we'll grab the next piece of pipe be this one let's see we got 108 108 109 111s okay cool 109 all right so I mean, there we go so pretty much the exact yeah, same right now same we're one. seeing all good wall all right cool we'll go to the next one here 110 109 110, 109, 108, 110. So again, yeah. we're getting pretty much the exact same, same thing. All data right. from Perfect. all three different sets of pipes. All right, so what you guys are seeing here is, is we are getting the same data that we, uh, for all three pipes. And I, again, I mean, based on this data, I would say, hey, these pipes are good. There's no wall thinning. They're, you know, they're within the, the average wall thickness, the standard wall uh, nominal thickness, even with manufacturer standards of variance. And so, I mean, I would say that all of these would pass. Um, now, what I want uh, to show you guys is the next part of this, which is, you know, the sonic guided wave technology. And so this is stuff that we've been using since 2004. We've been using a Pulse Echo since 2004, but we're gonna dive into, you know, this right here, um, which is gonna show you guys how this stuff works. So we have this set up on a two inch. All right. So our blue wave that we're seeing is our live wave that we're scanning. Yeah, so, so that's, you can so what's happening here is, um, as Chad was saying, this is our live wave. What's unique though is what you saw me doing with the Pulse Echo was it, it was doing, you know, each point I was putting on is one test location. What this is doing, what's so unique about Guided Wave and what we've developed is we're sending 10,000 test points around this piece of pipe. And so I can hit go and I'm, I've gathered, you know, another 10,000, another 10,000, and I'm able to measure this stuff. And so this is significantly faster we're able to identify. And so what I actually found here was this was a dry signal and that dry signal is going to be, you know, regarded to a dry signal pipe. So Chad, if you'll move the pipe again. Um, next pipe we have here is, let's see. Same diameter, same schedule. We're just doing a sonic inspection to see the internal condition. All right, hit start. All right, so this is, this is, this is different. So um, based on, you know, my, our non-destructive testing and, and our knowledge of this, um, I'm gonna say, that this is the bad pipe. 
Uh, that would be a pretty good guess. That I'm going to say that's the bad pipe. I'm, very, pretty, I'm 100%. We have very little, little energy coming back all in right, our receiving right, transducer, right. which would indicate that their internal condition is yeah. bad. It's bad. Okay, so let's move on to the next pipe. So the, our, 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 our technology is this stuff, it really works. It's um, live, it's quick. It's fast. And non-invasive. Um, and we run this through background and analytics and stuff, but all right, let's move on to this next piece of two and a half inch. Okay, so this is unique too. So what we're seeing here um, is a wet signal um, instead of a dry signal. So this was set up on a dry pipe and we're seeing these leak waves that are in there. And what that is doing is that showing that there's water in there. That stuff that the pulse cycle didn't pick up. And so what we're even gonna do now to really prove and show you guys the difference of this stuff is, you know, we're, we're actually gonna dump this stuff out. Um, but what I wanna do and, and kind of discuss before this is, um, we, we designed this test because the, I mean, Chad, tell me a little bit about Pulse Echo, just kind of what wave it uses um, and the importance of a Pulse Echo. So the Pulse Echo is gonna be a bulk wave that goes from the outside diameter to the inside diameter to read the thickness of the wall. So if there was pitting or corrosion in there and you had to have the exact pinpoint of the PE gauge transducer on that portion, as we saw in our demonstration, all of the numbers around the circumference of the pipe were all yeah, the same. All so they indicated good, yeah. that there was nothing wrong with the pipe, but that's just gonna tell you the wall. Now with the sonic inspection, we're gonna be able to identify dry water or obstruction and corrosion. So it is a different device of UT that indicates yep. the actual true internal condition. Yep. It's like a replacement for a visual inspection. Yeah, and this is why I, I we wanted to create this video for you guys is so that you could have the shrewdness when you're being offered non-invasive, non-destructive testing by fire contractors, what they're using is non-compliant. So when we look at NFPA 25, chapter 14, the purpose of NFPA 25, chapter 14 is to identify the internal condition of piping. Yeah. And so with that, the Pulse Echo, as you guys just saw in here, it's only identifying the wall. It didn't pick up air, it didn't pick up water, it just gave us, you know, is the integrity of the pipe, you know, being upheld at, at least? It was there wall thinning? And none of that happened. Then we brought in the guided wave, and what's unique about what we do, again, as Chad said, is it's going around that pipe. It's telling us the internal condition, and this is why this is so important, is because fire contractors and other type of services that are using Pulse Echo need to have, it can be used as a supplement. The Pulse Echo is a fantastic technology. It works impeccably well, but it needs to, for NFPA 25, uh, chapter 14 compliance, need to be accompanied with a visual or camera inspection or a sonic inspection to identify the obstruction inside. So if you've had these services, you need to go back to your, your preferred contractor, whoever it was, and say, hey, you know what? Based on what we have just learned, it's putting our facility, our patients, our occupants, our assets at risk. We want you to go back and do these inspections because you sold us what was supposed to be an internal inspection. It's not internal, it's wall thickness. And it's a great service. It can be used a little bit for some asset management stuff. We've been using it for since almost 20 years we've been using a Pulse Echo. It's a really good piece of technology. As a but supplement. With, yeah, as a supplement. We, we used to actually, we used to never use Pulse Echo, um, like unless we wanted to true up readings that we were really concerned about. And so um, I really, we're, we're leaving you with this. I hope that you guys found this educational. Do you have anything you want to add in, Chad? Oh, I just wanted to say the reason for I being able to identify air and water is because uh, plenty of dry and pre-action system that I've assessed will have mm -hmm. yep. standing water in it. Yep. So you have steel, you have air, you have water, you're gonna have corrosion and pitting and obstruction material. Yeah. Same thing with the wet system. When you have air in there with the water and the steel, you're gonna have trapped air corrosion. Yeah. And that's part of the biggest yeah. pipe failures in most warehouses and big box stores and overhead yeah. wet systems. So just being able to identify the internal condition other than the wall yeah. condition of actually what's truly inside of that pipe is the benefit of the sonic inspection compared to the Pulse Echo. Yeah. Just two very different types of ultrasonic testing technologies. Ultrasound is NFPA code, but you, we need to, you, you guys need to be knowledgeable about what type of ultrasound is actually gonna provide you the security and peace of mind when you leave your facility. And so thank you guys for tuning in. Chad, thank you, thank you so much for designing this little test to show you know the difference between Pulse Echo and our sonic inspection. And uh, thank you guys, have a wonderful day. See ya. Thank you. Oh, my coffee.